Hello, Lily Thistlers. My name is Kim, and I am a yoga teacher based in central Alberta. I'm not only a yoga teacher, but I'm also a knitter, and I know firsthand just how much mm, discomfort knitting can sometimes cause to our bodies. I also know that if we get out of our chairs and do a little yoga, a little body movement, then some of those, that pain, discomfort, and uh, those aches and pains can just melt away and that will make us better knitters. We can knit for longer and we can knit without discomfort. So, sounds like a good deal to me. I'm so glad that you're back with me for another episode of Yoga for Knitters. If you'd like to learn more about me, what I do, you can visit my website, turninggroundyoga.com or find me on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook at Turning Ground Yoga. So today's practice is gonna focus on our hips and on our wrists. And remember when I said that we need to get out of our chairs every now and then to do yoga? Well, we don't need to go very far. In fact, today's yoga practice is going to incorporate the chair for every single posture. So go ahead and grab a chair. Mine is just a standard old fold up chair. I can get my legs underneath. You wanna be able to get your legs underneath whichever chair you use. Probably a dining room chair will be just fine. The other thing you may find you need for today's practice is something to support the outside of your hips with. I've got two little balls of yarn. Um, so when I have my hips apart and my knee doesn't go all the way to the floor, like most people's doesn't, sometimes you want a little bit of support on the outside of the leg, just tucked in on the outside of the hip so that uh, there's, the floor comes up to raise the knee and you don't have to use those inner muscles, the inner thigh muscles to hold your leg up. So that's the other prop you might want. Your balls of yarn work great. You can use uh, pillows, blankets, blocks, whatever you have. Okay, for our first pose, we're going to come into position in front of your chair with the seat facing you. And then if it feels good, you're going to bring the feet together nice and wide. So there's a diamond shaped here in your inner thigh. And then take your prop if you want it and place it on the outside of your hip so that the hip is supported. And you can sit like this relatively comfortably for the next minute or so. Okay, now we're going to come all the way forward and adjust where your chair is until your forehead connects with the chair seat. Turn this beautiful forward fold. And what you're feeling is an opening in the hips. Depending on where you're tight, you may feel this in the outside of the hip, near to the keister, or you may feel it in the muscles on the inner hip <clears throat> but wherever you're feeling it, that's right for you today. That's where you need the opening. The forward fold portion of this, par, uh, this pose is wonderful because it helps to act like a reset switch. It calms the nervous system, although knitting also does that, we know. And it just helps us to relax. Then bring the hands above the chair like this. You can rest your elbows on the chair if that feels good, or you can rest your wrists on the chair. And we're going to move the fingers one at a time, joining the thumb with the first, second, third, and fourth finger, and stretching the hands in between. So first finger, release. Second finger, release. Third finger, Release, and fourth finger, release. Just continue doing that, stretching the hands, and moving the fingers through these magical mudras, hand positions, which I'll tell you a little bit about now. Jnana mudra is your first finger and your thumb together. This symbolizes the unity of universal and inner individual consciousness. Shuni Mudra is your second finger and thumb together. It symbolizes patience, discipline, and stability. 
Surya Ravi is your third finger and thumb together. It symbolizes energy, health, and balance. And Bodhi Mudra is your fourth finger and thumb together, which symbolizes communication, openness, and intuition. Finally, stretch your hands nice and wide. Squeeze them nice and tight. Stretch them out one more time. And then relax. And gently bring yourself up back to a nice, tall, seated position. Right on. So to get out of this one for your legs, if you have any props, take them out of the way. And then use your hands on the outside of your hips to bring the knees back together. Take the hands back behind you. We're just going to lift the heart, lift the chest, do a counter pose to that back bend. And then come back to a seated position. And this time, we're going to slide our legs nice and long underneath the chair. Okay, so this is staff pose or dandasana. So our legs are long. Our feet are flexed. We're at a 90 degree angle at the hips. And we're aiming our forehead towards the mat, uh, towards, not the mat, towards the chair one more time. Okay, here we go. I want you to fold forward, hinging from the hips, coming towards the chair, and then round. Now, if your legs, your hamstrings, the back of your legs are really, really tight, you can always bend the knees. In fact, you can use these little balls of yarn underneath your knees. Okay, if that's still not happening for you, all you need to do is bring the chair a little closer to your forehead. So you can use a prop, a pillow, a blanket, anything like that to bring the chair up. So there isn't quite so much bending in the back and strain on the back of the legs. <clears throat> you want to find that place where you're at sweet, sweet discomfort, but not pain. We never ever want to be in pain. So while we're here, I'm going to take care of our neck. <clears throat> when we knit, quite often, unless you're like pro and you never have to look at what you're doing, we draw our gaze downwards and we're looking at what we're doing. And that, of course, puts a little strain on the back of the neck. So I want you to take your hands, take your thumbs, bring them to the very back of the head, the occipital part of the skull. And I want you to just massage little circles all along the occipital bone of the skull. It can feel rather tender. That's how you know this needs to happen. If it's tender, that means you've been bending your head forward too much. Let's take care of it. Wonderful. That feel should, should feel really good. And then when you feel like you've had enough, you can let the hands drop down to the floor and allow the shoulders to completely relax. Take a deep breath in. And feel your breath traveling all the way to the bottom of your lungs, filling every part of your lungs. Nourishing you with oxygen. And each breath that you are aware of taking brings you back to the present moment, which is such an important thing. And I think as knitters, we get that. And that's part of why we knit. It keeps us present, keeps us focused, it keeps us mindful. Those are all aspects of yoga as well. Many parallels, all of them good. When you're ready, you're going to gently use your hands to roll us on up one more time. And then take that counter pose. So again, hands back behind you. Lift the heart, lift the chest, draw the head back. Perfect. 
Perfect. This time we're going to bring only our left leg in, into um, land on the inside of our right thigh. And then again, if you need that prop on the outside of the left thigh, please place it there. Awesome. We're going to hinge forward once more. And this time, reach the right arm forward, grab the fingers with the left hand, and gently give the wrist a little tug back. So we're stretching through the forearm. Breathe deep. Two more deep nourishing breaths. Every breath keeps you present. Fills you with light. And it's very healing. It's very restorative. And it will make you a better person, not just a better knitter. One more deep breath in. And then gently release the wrist. Shake the hand out. And slowly make your way up. Wonderful. Can you feel how calming it is to lean forward? It's like a magic. My switch legs. So our left leg is straight. The right foot is planted to the inside of the left thigh. And then maybe you want that prop on the outside of your hip. And then hinge forward again, if you need to bring that chair a little closer to your forehead. That's what props are for. <clears throat> and then flex the left hand back, grab a hold of the fingers and gently pull the fingers towards your head, stretching through the left forearm. Breathe deep, enjoy this moment, enjoy this time that you're allowing yourself to do better, to be better, and to heal. Big deep breath. One more. Make it juicy. And then release the fingers, let the hand hang down and shake it out. And then gently come on up. Well done, we have one more to do. For our last posture, we are going to come to lie on our backs. So you wanna wiggle your bum close enough to your chair so that your legs are resting on the seat of the chair and that's taking all the weight of your calves. Hmm. This is just a wonderful way to reset the spine. If you have any aches and pains in your back, which is pretty typical when you sit and knit for a while, this will just melt them away. The longer you hold this, the better you feel. But while we hold, we're gonna do a little bit more work on our wrists. So grab a hold of your <clears throat> left hand with your right hand and then you're going to very gently pull with your right hand pull your wrist away from your arm think about all the little tiny bones in your wrist and how much space they're getting now because you're pulling that space open very slowly very gently nothing should hurt and then you're going to very slowly very very slowly Release the pressure and bring your hand back to where it was. Seeing all those little bones with your x-ray vision go back into place. It's tiny, but it's powerful. Kind of like a toddler. Let's switch sides. Grabbing your right hand with your left hand, gently pull and create space for all the little bones in your wrist. Breathe into it. And then just as slowly, with love, 
Releasing, releasing, bringing everything back into place. Awesome. Think about how your wrists feel right now. They should feel spacious and alive and energized and taken care of. And so should you. So you can stay in this posture here for as long as you want. You can call it a shavasana. Or you can get rid of the chair and just lie on the floor completely. So however you want to end your practice, do that. Stay there as long as you want. And until we meet again, thank you for practicing with me. Namaste.